Sage Field Operations is first and foremost going to be a cloud-based project management application. It is going to be integrated with your document control module in order to provide that real-time information that you're probably looking for. So document control is a necessary module in order to integrate with Sage Field Operations. And then of course, this solution is also a time tracking tool and it does have a responsive design, meaning that the screen will contour depending upon the device that you're working off of. So if you're working off of a smaller device, the screen will change essentially to become more user-friendly. Sage Field Operations is going to integrate directly to Sage 100 Contractor through that document control module. This also means that there will be real-time information available on both Sage Field Operations and Sage 100 Contractor. And it will also make payroll an easier process because those entries are going directly into your payroll. So uh, the 551 daily time entry. In order to utilize Sage Field Operations, you do need to have one standard license, and this would likely be an administrator within your company. They would have full visibility into all of the project-related information, and they would also have the ability to manage any of your users, so all of the permissions that they'll have and those security settings for each of your users. This solution is meant to save your office staff time as well as save time for your employees out in the field. This would eliminate paperwork and eliminate the manual data entry that you might currently be doing. Sage Field Operations will also provide tools that your field employees would find beneficial to increasing productivity and efficiency on the job site. They can easily schedule and enter time into Sage Field Operations. Users would also have the full visibility to site history pertaining to each job, including previous RFIs, attachments, sketches, percentages of work complete, and more. So all of the information that's currently within your Sage 100 contractor solution would also be visible from the Sage Field Operations platform once that's been integrated. Sage Field Operations will eliminate the need for paperwork and significantly reduce the manual data entry for both field and office users. And within Sage Field Operations, you also have the ability to create custom forms that can replace some of the other documents you might currently be using and eliminating the need for paperwork in this regard. These custom forms can be used to capture additional information that may, may be needed on the job site, but most of the information that you're likely looking to capture is already going to be a feature within Sage Field Operations. And all of the options that you'll be seeing today are going to be user specific. So that gives you the ability to choose who does what with the software. So there are a couple of different options as far as time entry is concerned within Sage Field Operations. There is a punch in, punch out feature. There's also the standard time entry. So if you're looking to just record a certain amount of hours spent on a certain cost code at a certain job, you can do that as well. And time entry is also one of the, the licensing options as well. So if you do have employees that just need to track time rather than adding additional information for each job, they could utilize the time entry license. And with that, let's go ahead and take a look at Sage Field Operations. So the first page that we are currently looking at is what we like to call the resource scheduler. 
So from here, I can see all of the employees within my company and schedule out new assignments and also see where they're at at any time. So there is some context associated with the colors on the resource scheduler. If an assignment was shaded in green, you would then know that that person is currently working. If it's shaded in purple, you would know that they're traveling towards the job site. So you'll always have that context, visual context as to what your employees are doing at any time. On the resource scheduler, we can also look out into the future if we wanted to look at possibly the next two weeks or the next month. And this solution will allow you to go up to six months out so that you always have that visibility into future timeframes for any PTO or any time off that your employees might be taking. You also have the ability within Sage Field Operations to create different groups, and this will limit the view within the resource scheduler. So if you have certain teams or crews that often go out together, you can limit the this current page in order to just see those particular individuals. On the left-hand panel is where you have some options as far as the job. So I have a job lookup up at the top, which is going to be a direct connection into your 100 contractor system. So if the appropriate job wasn't at the top here, I could search for a different job within the solution. And underneath that, I can see that job 201, Trap and Motel, is currently on this page. And underneath that, I have all of the different cost codes for this job. So from here, I can even see the estimated hours, the actual hours, and then the variance between the two so that I have that constant visibility as far as the cost codes are concerned as well. I can also use these cost codes to drag and drop onto a particular person's schedule. So if I wanted to put the foundation framework for the Trap and Motel, for instance, on Peter's schedule for Wednesday or for today, I can simply drag and drop that onto his schedule. I can also move this around once it's been placed on the resource scheduler or open this up and change some of the information if that's needed. So if you are scheduling these out ahead of time for your employees out in the field, you can also use the More tab to schedule a new assignment. So within the, if I'm adding a new assignment, I can select the appropriate job. Then I can also select the phase, which if you're using phases within Sage 100 Contractor, the phase will limit the cost codes that you have visible, just like they would within the 100 contractor system. So under the cost code, I can see my full cost code list and choose the appropriate one. Then as possibly a supervisor or someone who is scheduling out different assignments ahead of time. I have the full list of employees that I can choose from. Additionally, I can move into the crew section, which is another feature within Sage Field Operations where you can choose the appropriate crew and that would add all of those people and add a, an assignment for each of the people within that crew. Notice that there are also options to add in vendors, and this is for scheduling purposes. You can also have them be notified automatically through email if you are if you do have different vendors or subcontractors coming out to the job. Then you can also schedule out equipment. This is just the allocation of the equipment for each of the jobs that you currently have. If you are using a priority, you can choose directly from here, and this would reflect the list that you have within 100 Contractor. 
And then down at the bottom, we have a couple of different options as far as entering the scheduled start and scheduled end or a scheduled amount of hours. So you can do one or the other, you don't have to do both. And in order to change these times, I would click on the clock. For instance, we want them to start at 8 a.m. and go until 2 p.m. And then we can change the scheduled hours to the appropriate time. If I was scheduling multiple cost codes or multiple assignments for different groups of people, I could go save and new, and that would take me back to this same page. And once I have added the assignment, that will also be located on my employee's assignments page. So if I wanted to look at more of a supervisor or superintendent view, I would move into the jobs page. And so from here, I can see all of the current jobs within my company. And if I drill down into the correct one, I can see the additional information that has been added previously from my Sage 100 Contractor solution, if you already have that information in Sage 100 Contractor, and to continue to record additional information. I also have some capabilities as far as receiving directions. So this would open Google Maps in order to take me to this job site. And then there are some additional details as far as the overview of the job. So this note down here, which is also available in the notes section, that is going to be more of the scope of the work rather than a journal entry. And a journal entry would be actually located within the daily field reports. But if I did need to update the scope, I could do that directly from here. Under the assignments, I can see all of the assignments that I had previously recorded. And again, if I'm a supervisor or superintendent of these other employees, I can choose an all start or all punch actions. And this is going to be the punch actions option as far as time entry is concerned that we had discussed earlier. So if I wanted to say all work start, looks like I have another assignment that has already started previously. I don't want to go back and find that, but just know that you can go through this and use any of these all start or all punch action items. Under the contacts is where I can see the contacts as far as this job is concerned. So these would be the contacts associated with this job within Sage 100 Contractor. I also have capabilities as far as creating a new purchase order. So rather than calling back into the office and telling them that I purchased something after the fact, I can actually create a new purchase order on the fly. And then of course I can add pictures as well as itemized detail. If your company is also performing work for your customers, for your construction projects after the fact, there's also work order functionality and capabilities within Sage Field Operations. It's the opposite side. So you would still have that visibility and be able to record that information on any of the jobs that you have. Then down at the bottom, we also have the ability to create a new change order. So if, for instance, the customer wanted something changed or if the dimensions weren't correct, for whatever reason, you can create that change order directly from here. So again, that's going to enhance the communication as far as between the office and your field employees. That way your office staff also has visibility into these changes that may be happening on the job site. Within Sage Field Operations, there's also the option to create a request for proposal. 
and a request for information. So if you did need to create one of those document types, you can create them directly from here. And as far as the forms that we had briefly discussed earlier to capture additional information, those would be located under the report section if they had been created by an administrator already so that you would have them to use while you're out on the job site. Then for the forms, there are also some capabilities as far as when you want to require or warn an employee that they might need to use this form. Uh, for instance, before creating a daily field report. So since we're still on the overview page, under the attachment section is where you're going to be able to see all of the previous attachments. So this can be an attachment that was attached in any of these different items, whether that's a purchase order, field report, change order. So all of that information will be located in one location and from here you can also search through those different attachments. You can also add an attachment directly from here. So if I wanted to add a new picture, I could add the picture and then I also have sketch capabilities for if I wanted to provide further context to that image. So then under the daily field report, you'll be able to uh, enter in additional inform information. So the reported by person is going to automatically default to the person who is creating the daily field report. The description is again a default, but you can also change this if needed. And then the date and the weather and the temperature will automatically come in. And we also have some user defined fields that you could enter in if you do have custom fields within Sage 100 Contractor, you could change these to reflect that. So once the daily field report has been generated within Sage Field Operations, that will also be visible within Sage 100 Contractor. So again, I can see all of the assignments, and I can even you know, use the punch in, punch out actions for my other employees directly from here. Under this notes section is where you can record those journal entries. And you can also create canned responses as far as the notes that your field employees can use. So if I wanted to record that the purchase order had been received on site, that is one of the canned responses that's been added by the administrator. And once I save that, that will go into the yellow note. Under labor is where I would be able to record a certain amount of hours as far as each of my employees have worked for that day. And I can go through and of course choose additional people. So again, I would choose the appropriate people, the cost code, the pay type, and you can limit this list if you only want your employees to have access to particular pay types. And there's also some functionalities as far as a hierarchy for payroll time or labor time within Sage Field Operations. And so after a certain amount of hours each day, if with regular pay, they would automatically move into overtime. And some of the note sections or all of the note sections within Sage Field Operations will be talk to text or dictation enabled, depending upon the device that you're working off of. So if you're working off of a phone or a tablet or even a computer, you would still have that option to talk to text into these note fields. So from here, I can record any subcontractors, how long they were working on the job site. I can also record any incidents. So for instance, if there was an incident,
I could record that in detail within this solution. Any meetings, for instance, safety meetings or project manager meetings can be added through here. And all of these options should look pretty familiar if you do already have the document control module. But instead of having to do the double data entry and manual data entry after receiving the paper back from your field employees, it's going to be entered by them at the time of each of these options. And that way they can easily go through and make this process much more efficient. For equipment, I can also show that equipment was used. And then I can show how many hours that it was operated for, standby and idle. Again, there's a notes field down at the bottom if more information was needed. And within the unit section, I have the ability to show the amount of units that were used for that particular day for any of the different bid items that you currently have. Again, under the reports would be any of the forms that were created. And of course, down at the bottom, I still have capabilities to add any attachments. So if I did want to add a new attachments, I could choose a particular file. And if I'm working off of a cell phone, this would take me directly to my camera roll. So your users out in the field can continue to take pictures of the job site as they go and continue to do work throughout the day. And then they can just come back and add these as needed. When choosing a category, this will have some reporting or more feature functionality as far as the search tool is concerned. And once the attachment has been added to the daily field report, that will also be located within the job overview. So within 100 contractor for the attachment section, you would also be able to see that there. And if I did want to sketch up the image to provide further context, after the image has been added, I would be able to select that background image, and then I can mark up the image as needed. So I can add you know, squares, different shapes, text, whatever would be needed or that you might currently be doing. And if I did want to email this out to someone in particular, perhaps someone outside of my company, I could enter in the that person's email address. And once I save the sketch, that would be sent over to them. Once all of the appropriate information has been added for this daily field report, I can actually create the PDF of the daily field report. And this can be customized according to your company's preferences. So this would be your logo up at the top. And then of course, some of the information doesn't always have to be added. And if we did need to remove any of these different fields, we could just minimize those fields that weren't used. And towards the bottom, we can enter in you know, a project manager's name. This can also have a different title if you did wanna send this out to somebody else, perhaps the project owner. And Sage Field Operations will also enable signature capture. So if you do want your supervisor to sign off at the end of the day, they can sign off within this section. So from a time entry only perspective, 
and for each of your employees within Sage Field Operations, they will be able to look at the assignments page. If assignments had been scheduled out for them, they would be able to see that on the assignments page. Otherwise, they can actually schedule time for themselves. So using the plus option up at the top, an assignment is going to be the punch actions option, so punching in and out. And the assignment time is going to be recording a certain amount of hours. So if I did want to record that I had spent five hours on a particular cost code, I would go through the same process that we went through earlier and choose the appropriate time frame. Now from this perspective, the labor hours will automatically calculate when we choose the start and end time. And again, I can add a description. If I'm adding assignments for multiple cost codes or mul multiple jobs, I can just go save and new down at the bottom. Once that's been saved to my schedule, you'll notice that the daily time will also start to calculate as well as the weekly time. So I can always see where I'm at for the week. And from here, I can also submit my weekly time, which will initiate the approval process within Sage Field Operations. So there is a time review portion. So from here, supervisors, payroll employees, anyone who needs to be in the process of approving time will have the option to come in and approve, approve with a comment, or even edit the assignment activity. So then back within Sage 100 Contractor, if I go into the daily field reports, and I open the most recent one, I can see all of that information, incidents, meetings, sorry, I went to my other screen. So I can see all of that information in real time. And this also allows me to keep up with the job to date cost more efficiently and be able to cost out our jobs and projects in a more efficient way. So just to recap what we went over today, Sage Field Operations is really meant to improve efficiency both for your office staff as well as for your field employees. It also works as a tool to enhance the communication throughout your entire process and streamline operations.